Hi, welcome to 2020 Tasty Treats with Gourmet Quilter. We're having a whole lot of fun in 2020 doing, oh, guess what, Tasty Treats. So this time we're doing a whole series of applique shapes or pictures. We're doing a series called In the Playroom. So I have a picture here of the 20 different uh, appliques that we'll be doing this. So we're doing one a day for 20 days. And so we'll just go through them fairly quickly. If you've signed up on GourmetQuilter.com for the Tasty Treats in the Playroom, then this is the sort of pattern that you'll be able to download and print. It's got all the shapes ready for you to trace. The shapes are numbered so you've got some idea where things sit behind and on top so that you place them more or less in numerical order. The lower the number, the more likely it is to sit behind another shape. So I'm going to go ahead. This time we're just doing, the blocks are all different sizes, but that's kind of fun. Um, so this time we're doing a little piggy bank because I think that you probably find a piggy bank in playrooms. I'm not really sure, but I think a piggy bank should be in a playroom. So I've started positioning everything. I'm just using a fusible web, so I'm just starting to get it all ready in place. I haven't ironed anything on yet. We've got a little tail, a little curly tail here. So when I cut the tail out, because there's a tiny hole to indicate the little twirl, I actually, I guess you could call it cheated, I did a little slit just so that I could get in there because it sits back together again. I am using batik cloth and it doesn't fray so much, but really when it's got fusible web it's absolutely fine to do things like that because the, the fusible web will help hold everything. So his little tail just sits just underneath at the back there. Just make sure that you've got room for seams and things. His ear is sitting behind, his little nose is on top, he's got another ear here. I've already popped a little tiny eye on. Now the eye could be done with a pen if you don't want to applique something that small. I'm free motion appliqueing, so it's kind of fun. Small things are not really that much of a problem. So on the pattern there's a, a smaller picture, but a picture of the finished applique, so it helps you with where things go, as well as the full size shapes. And that's the little slit in the back to put the money in. He's a fat little piggy. He's going to take lots of money in. So that's kind of cute. Um, so I can iron all that in place now. I think he's ready to go. So on his nose, sometimes we see two little nostrils and you could uh, cut some tiny, tiny pieces out. You could just stitch them with the free motion stitching or you could use a marking pen to mark something small like that. If I'm using a marking pen, I probably would use one of these uh, Pigma Micron pens, just a very fine one. They've got a very tiny little point on them and if I was just going to mark two little nostrils I probably would just do something like that and they're done already because these are permanent on fabric so that works quite well so I'm going to free motion stitch I've because of that I need a stabilizer behind I'm using a cotton batting as my stabilizer it's not fusible it just sits there nicely so I've got the machine all set up to do uh, free motion stitching. I've got a little open toe free motion foot on. I've dropped my feed teeth. Other than that, I don't think I have made any changes. It's just a regular stitch because you create the stitch length yourself. So then I'm just going to stitch around. Because it's all now fused on, it won't move. And I'm just going to start somewhere and stitch on the applique, but just close to the edge. I'm using a dark grey thread, which I use pretty much for everything when I'm doing this sort of applique. It just helps outline things a little bit. So we'll come up and we'll get up and do his little curly tail. Other than that, I think you know how to do this sort of applique. The beauty of free motion and small things is that you can turn your work. Okay, so I'm here at this tail now, so I'm just going to skip onto that tail. Now that's going to be a little bit tricky because it wants to kind of come over, so I'm actually just going to go onto that bit that would come over normally, rather than trying to stitch around and come around here, back to that line and then come back around so that it looks as if it's twisted around and over. And then I can come back around here. 
and back. And now we're back on the peg again. So really everything else is fairly straightforward. There's a couple of smaller shapes. So I'll go ahead and do the applique and show it to you when it's finished. So I've done all the stitching except this little bit that indicates the slit in his back where you could put some coins. And that's pretty much it done now. So I'll take him out and show him to you. I like to give everything a little final press when I've done everything. This makes it sit nicely. So there we've got our little piggy bank. The first one in our series to go uh, in the playroom. So we'll pop him up here and we'll just add to them. So we're going to be going across the picture in, in rows. So I think it's going to be looking pretty good. We're already pretty happy with a little piggy bank. Um, so I will see you again with applique number two.